Voice introduces Bahamaland, an unlimited nationwide calling plan for only $5 a month. So call home today and connect again with Bahamaland. Home never felt so close. The introduction of value-added tax legislation is imminent. More than 30 workers left jobless as a popular fast food chain closes a store. The Minister of Education defends candidates for the next College of the Bahamas president and the next heart ball is almost here. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. Good evening Bahamas, I'm Christina McNeil and your MB12 starts right now. Thanks for joining us. It may have seemed to have taken a backseat to all the big BTC news, but the government is still on schedule to implement value-added tax by its July 1st deadline. That according to State Minister for Finance Michael Halkidis, who today said the Christie administration is hoping to table that legislation sometime next month. He also responded to critics who say that is failing in other countries in the region and the Bahamas should take heed. Nikki DeVoe has more in this report. We have to have it in place at least uh, several months before the implementation date. So we can't go much more than, you know, mid-February, late February before we, before we bring it. But I don't want to say next week it'll be in Parliament or the week after because that's not something that I can, that I can say. Halkidis hinted today that the public's slow response to the VAT white paper released back in February of last year is partly responsible for the delay in tabling legislation. But he says the government will be ready for the deadline. Unfortunately, we begun, you've begun to see the, you know, the feedback and people paying attention to it um, late last, the middle towards the late last year and now. And um, in the spirit of, you know, the white paper, and in the spirit of consultation, we are listening to those. And so um, we expect that in a matter of weeks, we'll be able to compile all of the sort of feedback that we've been getting, make any adjustments that we think need to be made. And um, so you'll see it very, very, very soon. Halkidis also noted that while the government is moving toward the July implementation date, the Prime Minister is listening to concerns, and the Ministry of Finance has even tweaked some of its VAT proposals. However, he didn't go into detail. He also said they are listening to alternative suggestions and are taking them into account to see how they would impact the economy. When we find out something or somebody brings something to our attention that we might not have considered, because, you know, for whatever reason, then we, uh, we have to look at that, make sure that we're not disadvantaging any sort of, particularly any business uh, group. We have to look at what the consumers are saying to make sure um, there's nothing that we overlooked. And so it, it's all a process. Well, a recent study in Barbados concluded that VAT missed the mark in that country and instead increased the burden on the people. Those findings caused quite a stir among some Bahamians. But Halkita said he's not concerned, stating that the Bahamas cannot be compared to other Caribbean countries. That recent study by four Barbados Central Bank economists has concluded that the introduction of VAT back in 1997 did not materially alter Barbados's tax structure. In fact, it says the burden of indirect tax increased with the imposition of the VAT from an average of 6.4 percent of GDP to an average of 8.4 percent. Barbados Central Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell said the proportion of direct and indirect taxes to total revenue remained unchanged on average over the period 1980 to 2011. But Halkita said the Bahamas and Barbados are different. Barbados is an economy that has income tax, has personal income tax, it has corporate income tax, and it has uh, VAT. 
And as you know, they have been going through some issues right now. They're retrenching about 3,500 uh, public servants. Um, the general consensus is that um, a, a um, lack of control of spending over the years. You add into that the size of their civil service, um, some other international impacts on in the economy, um, they are in a particular problem. The same thing with other economies in the Southern Caribbean, where their agricultural economy has fallen apart in the case of one of the countries, their biggest employer um, left the country. And so I see some of the, um, you know, the opponents to the introduction of VAT referencing these countries and saying, well, that particular country has VAT and they are in trouble. Well, it's not only that. It's a whole mix of, um, of um, issues that, that they are grappling. Halkida says the government has the benefit of studies as well as programs that test the impact of VAT in the Bahamas. Despite hard opposition from the business community, members of the public and political opponents, the government has said VAT is necessary to bring down its massive deficit and get the country's spiraling debt situation under control. Ministry of Finance officials estimate VAT can generate about $200 million in annual revenue. Reporting for NB12, I'm Nakia DeVoe. Well, more than 30 employees of a popular fast food restaurant were left jobless this morning after the restaurant promptly closed its doors. Those workers are now seeking meetings with Labor Department officials over the matter. Dana Smith reports. Employees of Village Road's Kentucky Fried Chicken said they arrived to work this morning to find the restaurant permanently closed, leaving employees out of work and searching for answers. I came into work. I'm dressed coming to work when I reach. Man, I see everybody sitting down. I wonder what's going on. They, they give me the letter that the shop is closed. But I worked last night. I was scheduled for 3.30, but... I got a call, said that the store is closed, they're making us redundant, come for my letter. So I hop in the car, put on some clothes, hop in the car, and I came down here. I met the union and the other team members, you know. 35 employees are now left redundant with this KFC closure that workers said came without warning. Those scheduled for their early afternoon shift arrived in their work uniforms, ready to serve customers, only to be greeted with a large sign in the window, as well as letters addressed to them, informing that the restaurant is permanently closed. I'm surprised it happened like this, but I had a hint, you know, that, you know, you, at least if you're going to make people redundant, you give them notice, but we didn't have any notice. We heard those sip sip, but they didn't give any notice. In a statement released by Restaurants Bahamas Limited, the franchise holder of KFC locations in New Providence, the company attributed the closure to the presence of five KFC locations operating within two miles of each other, a position, according to the company, that is economically unsustainable. Employees said although they heard rumors of a closure, this morning's situation was still unexpected. We've been here in the sip sip and you would fall up then. You know, you don't drop nothing like that. That's wrongfully. You don't do things like that. Vice President and General Manager of Restaurants Bahamas Limited, Gabriel Sastre, said in a statement, quote, Making the decision to close a store is never an easy one, and we're extremely appreciative of the dedication and commitment that the Village Road team members have shown to the KFC brand. As we grow strategically across New Providence, we would be delighted for them to apply for any positions that become available. All the employees will receive severance packages and can apply to the other locations. I want to pay an installment. I don't want no installment. Give me me. I don't want no installment. Can you show us the letter? I'm with my letter, girl. With my name. Right here, right here, right here. See there? This is the installment what they want to pay. However, the employees said they will move on with their lives. Life ain't stop here, you know, life just goes on. They think there is no hope after KFC, but there is hope. I think I can venture out something for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I won't go no more job. Nicole Martin of the Bahamas Hotel Catering and Allied Workers Union was also on site at the closure of the store. After telling employees to give no further interviews to the press, she said a meeting is scheduled with labor officials over the matter. And this afternoon, union executives and several redundant employees arrived to the Department of Labor for that meeting. After gathering outside, they filed in to discuss the issue with labor officials. Union officials were not yet willing to say what they hope to happen as a result of this meeting with the 
the Department of Labor. From the Clarence A. Bain Building, Dana Smith, NB12. A 32-year-old man of Lincoln Road today charged with murder. Ernest Forrest appearing before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt for the December 31st murder of Kendrick King Strawn. According to initial police reports, King Strawn was found dead at a track road behind Yellow Elder Primary School off Blue Hill Road with multiple gunshot wounds. Forrest protested this afternoon as he was escorted into the South Street Court complex, maintaining his innocence. Forrest was not required to enter a plea to the charge. He will return to court on May 21st for service of a voluntary bill of indictment. Officials from the Florida Caribbean Cruise Line Association confirming the authenticity of a warning issued by Disney Cruise Lines on the port of Nassau. Association President Michelle Page confirmed that Disney issued an advisory to its passengers and that the association is concerned about crime in the country. According to a statement issued to cruise passengers on a recent Disney cruise to Nassau, there have been reports of increased crime, including assaults and robberies involving tourists in the area. The statement cautions passengers to be aware of their surroundings at all times to avoid shortcuts, narrow alleys and poorly lit streets, staying in downtown Nassau and other tourist locations. As in any large city, the statement says passengers ought to take basic precautions to make the most of the time ashore. The warning was posted on the website of Florida-based maritime lawyer Jim Walker. Earlier this month, Walker warned that the Bahamas was just one gunshot away from seeing cruise lines drop Nassau from its cruising itineraries. This warning came after Carnival Cruise Lines issued a crime warning to its passengers about the port of Nassau, revealing that it was in communication with the Bahamas government over the issues of crime and visitor safety. Meanwhile, the Florida Caribbean Cruise Line Association is awaiting a zone map from government and police officials clearly indicating tourist safe zones on New Providence. Today, a Disney representative told us that for several years, Disney Cruise Lines has shared travel safety tips with guests sailing to ports of call around the world. Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald responding to the controversy surrounding one of four candidates vying for the post of College of the Bahamas president. Today he chose his words carefully, telling MB12 that nothing has barred Dr. Rodney Smith from applying for the job. Smith resigned as COB president back in 2005 after admitting to and apologizing for not properly attributing another academic's material before a group of students at a COB honors convocation. Fitzgerald was deputy chairman of the college council at the time. I would assume that he was chosen based on um, his uh, qualifications uh, for the job, um, despite the fact that there was an issue with uh, him when I was on the council back then. Um, but you know, the selection committee is doing their job, and I'm sure at the end of the day, uh, they will do what is in the best interest of the College of Bahamas and the country. There was nothing that uh, barred Dr. Smith from uh, applying for the job. Um, he met all of the requirements, and so as a Bahamian, he was open to apply. We asked if there is any concern that Smith's possible return to that post would bring any negative attention to the institution. Fitzgerald said he did not want to comment on what ifs. Fitzgerald added that he is not a part of the advisory search committee, but he has every confidence in the members and assumes they made their choices based on qualifications. When the selection is made, uh, we will of course take into consideration that those on the committee would have consulted uh, the uh, college community and be cognizant of other national um, interests, but I have, I have no doubt that they will make the best choice in the interest of the institution. Once the committee and college council make the final recommendations, Fitzgerald says he will ultimately choose an appointment after cabinet discussions. Smith is currently the vice president for administrative services, operations analysis and research at Hampton University. Also shortlisted were Dr. Gregory Carey, Dr. Philip Carey and Dr. Olivia Saunders. Coming up, how you can help to repair the heart of a child and save a life. Goes towards repairing the hearts of our children. But first, the first graduates of the National Training Agency will tell you more when MB12 returns.